Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you a track day guide video. Before we start that, I just wanna say a massive shout out and thanks to GT85 who are sponsoring this video. Today's aim is to teach basic tips, tricks, pointers out on track and more advanced stuff. And for the more advanced stuff, I've got my good friend and pro driver, Ash Miller here. But first, we're gonna talk about what you need before you even get to the track day. A decent helmet. Now there's two types of helmet really. There's a full face helmet, like Ash Miller's beautiful painted one here, or there's the open face version, like my particular one. I tend to use this when I'm filming on camera because it's easier for you guys and girls to understand me. But if I was pushing really hard or if I was doing something like a race, then I would definitely wear my full face helmet because they are obviously safer. Next thing to talk about is your footwear. Thin soled shoes, if possible. Even a pair of Converse do the job relatively well. I run some Pilotis, I've run them for years. They do a fantastic job on the pedals and they're very comfortable to walk around in. You've got to wear long trousers. If you turn up in shorts, you won't be allowed to drive any kind of car on track. Today I'm wearing a t-shirt because it's lovely weather, because it has some GT85 branding on it and because I'm in a closed top car. So I've got a hard top car essentially. If I was driving a convertible or any kind of open top car, I'd need to be wearing long sleeves. Things like gloves are obviously optional. I tend to wear them because I've got an Alcantara steering wheel and I find they give me a bit more purchase on the wheel, but that's really down to you guys. It's a personal choice. Now let's talk about the car. Now obviously my M2 has been heavily modified over the past couple of years. I've thrown a lot of money, time, stress, tears, etc. at it, but it still gets checks prior to a track day, just like any of your cars should. The first thing to start with is the tires. As you know, I'm a Michelin brand ambassador, but regardless of whatever your tires are, you need to give them a good look over all the way through the depth of the tread because sometimes the inside of the tire front or rears that's where tires can wear pressures we'll talk more about once we get out on track and we've got ash in the car but other things to talk about whilst we're down here are wheel nuts make sure they're all talked up properly and tight because you definitely don't want a wheel falling off brakes get an absolute pasting on track days they really do i reckon you probably put between two and three years of normal brake use on a single track day. So make sure there's plenty of meat on the pads, the front axle and on the rear axle. Next thing to talk about is your fluids. Engine oil, has it been replaced recently? Like with the tires and the brakes, you're gonna put your car under a lot more strain out on track because you're revving it a lot harder than you normally would do, probably at least on the road. Engine coolant, is that topped up? Bring a jerry can or something with an extra 10, 15, 20 liters if you can in the boot. Obviously take it out before you get on track, just in case, because once again, you can be cut short with lack of fuel. Thankfully, Snetterden has actually got a fuel station literally two miles down the road. And one of the last things to do before you go out on track is stick your towing eye in. If you do have a small off and you end up in a gravel pit or the car breaks down, the marshals want to get you off the track as quickly as possible and in some cases they'll hook a rope to whatever they can hook it to. If you've got a towing eye, it makes it a lot easier for them and it means that your car doesn't get damaged. Before we head out on track, I want to say a massive thanks to my friends at GT85 for sponsoring this video. GT85 is a multi-purpose spray. It lubes, cleans, and protects lots of things in our everyday life, including our cars. As you hopefully know, I like to keep my sponsored content as organic as possible. I've been using this for the past 30 years or so. Way back when my first ever job as a bicycle mechanic, I used to use this all the time, and I still use GT85 on my mountain bike today. It's also really useful around the house. In fact, just last week, my patio door locking mechanism had seized up. I sprayed some of this in the locking barrel and on the locks themselves, and within 30 seconds, it's completely freed up and it feels as good as new. And bring it back to automotive, well, I've actually used this on all three of my cars recently. My M3 Touring, when I swapped the exhaust from the old Touring to the new Touring, I applied some of this to clean up the exhaust and protect it. 
And my M2, as you know, that's had lots of mechanical work on it over the past 12 months or so. And more recently, my 2011 Kashmir Passat. When I had it down at Elite Garages for a full service and overhaul, Brian organically took out a can of GT85 and started spraying it underneath. So make sure you check out GT85's website to find out where you can pick up a can or two of the best kept secret. Right then guys, we're in the car and ready to go out for the beginner's session essentially. This is the wonderful Ash Miller. I know we met back in 2019, which is scarily five years ago now. <laughs> How has that gone so quick? I God do not knows. know. But um, hi guys, my name is Ash Miller. I've been living in the UK, as you can tell, I've got a bit of an accent, Antipodean accent. So I've been living in the UK for the past 12 years. I've been racing for 25, started off in go-karts, did a bit of sports car racing with MX-5s and Lotuses over in Oz, and then came over to the UK to expand my career, have a bit of a crack at the UK racing scene. Uh, the last decade, I suppose, has been with coaching and being on track in this seat. I'll make sure I whack Ash's Instagram below and details below. If you're in the UK and you want some tuition, then honestly, hit this guy up. It stay to the inside coming out of the pits is a very important one as well as you're coming out into the pit or out of the pits onto the circuit for your first run yep try and stick off the racing line for the first corner just in case anything is coming up behind you sure just to give them a bit of space if they do end up having a lot of uh, speed differential because I suppose you. most pit exits are at the end of a straight as well aren't they exactly so, so a lot of the circuits have their right their pit lanes blend onto the circuit as the first corner is meeting it basically. So what you yep. want to be doing is just keeping an eye on the mirrors as you're coming out of the end of the pit lane just to make sure nothing's going to wipe you out. So you stick off the racing line for the first corner or so anyway, just so you get up to speed and not run into any trouble. Awesome, okay. So now I'm looking in my mirrors loads here. So what you should be doing, well, something that helps is not to really focus on the mirror. Okay. So initially if you're on track brand new for the first time and you're getting to grips with stuff to start with. Obviously do keep an eye on the people behind you, but don't focus too much on the mirrors yep. and jumping out of their way. You're all sharing the track together. Yep. So initially, just work on your own thing and getting up to speed. If you do have the space to move aside on a, on a, a straight, do it then. Otherwise, don't worry too much about what's going on in your mirrors because the guys that are behind you are responsible for overtaking you. Okay. So making sure that you're yeah, keeping the focus on what you're doing. But every now and again, for instance, we're coming out to the back straight here at Snedderton. Now's a good opportunity to, as you exit, glimpse in the mirror. If anything is right behind you, then blend out of the way. Usually on a track day, they'll get you to overtake on the left. Yep. So by indication as well. So if you pop it across to the right with the indicator on and blend off the throttle a little, usually the people behind can get through without too much trouble. Okay. That's another good one to remember. So obviously you're on a track day to get the most out of your driving. Don't worry too much about what's going on behind you because um, it tends to just distract you and looking ahead and looking forward is the primary focus of being on track in the first place. Sure, so yeah, it's your job to keep your car on the black stuff essentially. Exactly. Initially on a track day, you'll end up doing sighting laps in the morning, yep. which is a great opportunity to get used to the track. If you're brand new to track driving full stop or brand new to the circuit, fully recommend doing the sighting laps because that does get you into gear as to where you're going on the track. Yes, and so that's, I suppose that's the first thing is understanding yes. what's coming up. Is there a right here? Is it a slow hairpin like this one? Exactly. So sighting laps end up giving you a bit of a play-by-play. Well, play. Yep. as to what's coming up on the circuit to get you prepared for the track day so you're not just going out of the pit lane straight away and going, I don't know where I'm going. Completely blind. It's something I find, Ash, if I'm going to a new circuit especially, um, you obviously know the majority of circuits, especially in the UK, but I'll go onto YouTube a few yes. days beforehand and just watch some, some, some laps, not mm -hmm. particularly following what the driver's doing because the car's probably going to be different, it might be a bike, whatever, but yes. just again, understanding the layout of the circuit. So when I come here, it's not too alien. 
Yes. But obviously, it's always completely different to how it looks on camera. <laughs> exactly, yeah. In terms of the corners and things like that, on the video, it might look pretty quick or pretty open. Yeah. You'll get to the circuit, turn in and go, that was a bit tighter than I thought. Yes. So yeah, nothing replicates being there, but obviously being on YouTube and getting a few laps under your belt to, to view is a good way to get started as well and a nice little reference to start with. Yep. So you can sync the two together when you get there and everything becomes a bit more familiar when you get to the track. Sure, okay. Now something we touched upon on the intro is uh, temps, tire temps. Yes. What I would normally do is go out like we're doing now, probably do three to four laps at a medium pace like we're doing now, mm -hmm. and then come in, drop them, reset them essentially, because yes. the hotter they get, the higher the temps get, and you don't want that because the tires should be at an optimum pressure really, shouldn't they? Precisely. Go out and do a handful of laps to start off with, get the tire pressures and temperatures up and uh, up and hot yep and then come back into the pit lane and readjust them back to what your manufacturer recommends yep um, because optimally if you have them too high you'll find that the tires will start to go off quite quickly sure. and they'll wear uh, a bit more ferociously okay. um, if they're up at a higher temperature so do a few laps to start off with just check those tire pressures and bring them within that window again and then for the rest of the day when they come up to temperature yep they'll be ready to go and ready to keep leaning on for the rest of your sessions okay well, you can talk me through a lap here. We'll Absolutely. pick up the pace a little bit. Absolutely. So we've done a couple of laps here. We're heading down the main straight, the centre straight here at Snedderton. We're coming out toward the first corner. We're going to be braking roughly here down to fourth gear, staying wide. Off the brake, nose it in first apex. Now yep. come a little bit to the middle and then back across to the second apex. And then let the car run out to the track edge. It's pretty good. Braking nice and heavily. Down to second, we want to be finishing the braking before we turn in a nice late apex here so we can open out the corner as we're blending that throttle in. Awesome. Blend it across to the right hand side. This is just a little lean on the brake, slide off and a little bit of a later apex than that one, Joe. Yeah, okay. Because we want to be meeting the kerb sure. right around the it's side there. It's a longer there. corner than it looks, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It goes on for a lot longer than you think it does. Yeah. Coming up to Agostini here, braking at about 150, nice and hard on those brakes. Again, a late apex for this one and we're getting it nice and tight to the apex where it meets just there. Open it out on the exit as you blend the throttle in. Excellent. This is a nice little quick one. So it's a blend on the brake, smooth off, turn in. Power there as you open. Perfect. Across, braking again. This one here, use all the kerb on the inside. Squeeze a bit of power, stay mid-track, and then let the front of the car meet the green on the left there. Little dab and off. Third bollard, we're aiming to get to the apex. Squeeze the power, open it out as you do. Use all the track, that's beautiful. Excellent, Excellent. so flat out down the straight. Using all the track essentially, right? Exactly, all the time making action. sure you're spreading out the car across the track all the time. This is a fun little corner, squeezing that brake on. We're gonna go down to third gear here, smooth it in toward the inside, bit of braking and off, nose in, squeeze power, open out as you do. That was beautiful. quite a big curve there, isn't Lovely. it? Lovely. Into the bomb hole, little lift, nose in, bit of power there, squeeze and open it out to your left hand side again, <laughs> which is lovely. This one here, we're coming through core and we start to come in a little bit tighter initially. Yeah. Let the car run to the middle about now. And then we aim it back in again for the braking zone. So we're straightening up the car, letting the weight sit a bit more central. Off, nose into the apex, squeeze that power, open it out to the exit again as well. Absolutely rinse past an MX-5 because yeah. this thing is much more rapid than but that. gave him loads of space, didn't try to dive bomb him in the brakes exactly. or... Exactly, take your time and be patient. If you are the person catching somebody, take yep. your time and just be a little bit patient because again, they might be in a, in a particular car that they're not used to or they're gaining experience themselves. Like for instance, right now, we've yep. got a little bit of traffic, they'll pop yep. aside yep. there and we've got a nice clear channel down the left-hand side. They've seen us nice and early, yep. which is absolutely bang on. Again, we've got a Fiesta in front of us here who yeah. looks a bit new by the looks of it. Yes. Um, <laughs> and is figuring out their own lines. He's looking in his mirrors quite a lot, so he'll let us through. That's a Fiesta Junior. So obviously he hasn't got the ultimate pace that we do, so he yeah. will pop aside. This was a much better line, this one. Okay. And then as oh, you get yeah, on the opens power, it up nice and it opens it up on the exit. Exactly. Okay. Something particularly rear wheel drive, you want to be opening out the exits and opening out that steering yeah. as you get on the power. See it smooth and off, nose in, a bit tighter on the exit. Oh, on the, yeah, it was a little bit overdone there. Ah. This, uh, apex. 
<laughs> Very easy to do though, an yeah. Agostini. You tend to overshoot. Leave it in third here, I suppose. Third off in. Squeeze and open as you do. Power on, lovely. Across to the left, braking nice and heavily there. Smooth off, nose in. Squeeze a little bit of power. Good, open it out as you do. Get the weight to the middle, lovely. Good, smooth off now. Third bollard. Yeah. Squeeze the power, open it. Lovely. Beautiful. Awesome. Using, like I said, using all the track is imperative when you're on a track day. Yeah. Nice and smooth inputs is also a good one to remember. So smooth and progressive yep. on the steering, smooth and progressive on the throttle as well. Yeah. And the braking is the reverse of that. We want nice heavy braking coming into the braking zones, which is why the pads that we're going to talk about as well, the brake pads are also an important thing to remember because although the road pads are great for your road driving, yep. it would be considered to have a look at some more heavy duty pads, sure. some more multi-purpose sort of fast road driving pads yep. to stick in your car before a track day because A, you won't wear this quickly, B, you'll get a lot more of a positive feel on the pedal sure. and C, your brake fade will be minimized essentially. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So I've got a fast mini up behind me. See, yeah, so, so I've got a racing mini. So what right. was that? Exactly, that was the right thing to do. Yeah. Glimpse the mirror, he'll nip past on the left there and you can gallop on at yeah. your own pace when he goes past. So I might now do a slow down lap because I need to come in. I can feel the tire pressures are quite come high. Uh, obviously the temperature is 20 degrees outside, which is a miracle. Yeah, which is uh, incredible, yeah. <laughs> so the slow down lap, we talked about this a little bit off camera. Yes. It's very important, right? Indeed, you want to be getting everything back down to some sort of cool temperature. And the only way to do that is to do a nice slow lap around to get the airflow through everything as well. The cool air going through the discs, the calipers, sure. and also into the engine. So we can bring some temperatures down again because the last thing you want to be doing coming into the pit lane after a hot run is letting everything sit and soak with the heat being absorbed by everything around and soaking into all the components, particularly the brakes, and back into the pits and then making sure everything's nice and cool. Excellent. Well, that was that was fun. I can't believe how lovely and quiet it is out here. We, we picked perfect, perfect. <laughs> we really did. If we were in Q3 right now, we would be on pole. <laughs> yeah. It was perfectly clear track. Maybe with you behind the wheel, yes. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, well, um, I think we should go and grab some lunch. And then after lunch, almost like the part two of this video, yes. we'll set the pace up a bit. And you can talk to me more like it's me behind the wheel mm -hmm. and more for the audience that are maybe more experienced or do a lot of track days. Um, and yeah, just see where we're going, where we're going wrong and where we can improve. Improve, exactly. Yeah, the fundamentals to get the next step out of your driving yep. to then bring it up another level, especially if you say for people that have done this before, yeah, give a few quick tips and tricks to be able to bring your driving to another level Yep. quickly, yes. essentially, yeah. Awesome, cool. Thanks, mate. No worries. Sticker in here, keeping it nice and smooth. Smoothness is a big key factor okay. when we're talking about on-track driving. The less you do with your hands, the better. Okay. So nice, smooth inputs. First part of your braking is always nice and heavy. Okay. It's going to be winding off the brake as you start to get the weight turning into the corner. So that input was beautiful, running right to the edge of the track. That's it, there's another that much to, to use. Okay. So you squeeze a little bit, smooth off there now, roll that nose in, aiming for the last part of the curve, pick up the throttle there as you open out the corner. Beautiful, that's lovely, really good. That's it, heavy braking there. Good. So now I need stay, to be heavier. Yeah, now smooth off there now and nose it in. We want to gradually get the nose of the car to meet the apex there and squeeze and open there now. That was lovely. Nice and smooth. That's really good. Okay. Now squeeze a little. Now off. Now turn her in. Get the weight in. Squeeze a bit there and open her out there. Much better. Beautiful. Braking hard. Now smooth off as you turn in. Get the weight to shift. Pick up the throttle a little bit there. That's it. Now open it out as you get the power on. That's lovely. That's really good. Right out to the edge. Dab off in. Squeeze and open now. Whoa. That's it, yeah, a bit more open. Throttle was good, more yeah. open, that was lovely. And braking, fourth gear, stay wide. Now roll off the brake, nose are in with a little bit of power, trickle it through mid corner. Apex, open left, power. Perfect, lovely. And braking, nice and heavy. Second gear for this one, smooth off, in now. That's it. Right in, squeeze from there as you open to the curb on the left. More power, more power. Beautiful. Upper gear, much better. Lovely. 
Squeeze now, roll off. Patient on the turn in, nose in, that's it. Squeeze, open there, full power. Perfect. Lovely bit of driving. And nice and heavy braking, good. Good, now smooth off, nose in there, gradually wind it in. Bit tighter, squeeze it, open it. Could go a touch tighter on the apex there. Yeah. Dab, off, in, squeeze, open it, power. Lovely. Braking there, smooth off the brake as you turn, off it now, carry yeah. a bit of speed, that's it, squeeze, open there now, keep it buried out to your left. Good. Okay, dab, off, in now, squeeze a little, but keep it open to the left. More, 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 more power. Go, 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 that's better. Okay. Perfect. Much better, awesome. All right, make this MR2 look like you're standing still. Lovely braking, nice and heavy. Third gear. Smooth off, get the nose in, across to the left, braking there, and off, in. Squeeze a bit, open it as you do. Power, power, power. Lovely. Go to the track edge. Off now, in, carry a bit of speed in, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Open it, power now. Perfect. Lovely, <laughs> bring it in. That's it, keep going. Trickle a little bit of throttle through here, but bring it to the mid track. That's it, good. Looking up, nose in, squeeze, there, braking. Down, off the brake, nose in. Squeeze, open it as you do. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. Nice one. <laughs> That's excellent. A very important thing as well is keeping your eye level up. Yep. So you always want to be looking a long way down the track. Okay. So braking there, down one. So you're already looking at the apex, off now, in. And now look for the next apex now. Keep the nose in, squeeze, open to your left, power. Good, open, lovely, good. So keep the eyes up. Braking heavy, down, now look for that apex. Smooth in. Oh, I've gone in a bit deep Yeah, a bit hot, but that's okay. So recover it. Whey. Beautifully done. Love the work. Keep it up. <laughs> Sorry. That's an over. That's a beggar. Braking. Smooth off. Nose in. That's it. Looking up. Look for your apex. Power open now. That's beautiful. Excellent work. As human beings, we'll always go where we're looking. Yep. So if your eyes are up and you're looking at the corner ahead, yep. instinctively that's where you'll drive. Okay. If you're looking at the car ahead, and for instance, this, this happens a lot, if people are fixated on a car ahead yep. and they make a mistake, you'll follow them because okay. you're fixated on what they're doing. Yep. Whereas if you keep pushing your vision further ahead yep. and focus on the track, then you'll always keep to your own line and they'll make their mistake and you'll just do your own thing. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That's, an, that's a big important thing, particularly if you're doing track days, for the first time, yep. and you are up behind somebody, push that vision further ahead. Yep. Very, okay. Yeah, a okay. very important tip there. I've learned so much today uh, in that second session after lunch from you. Being smooth, as you say, using all of that available tar tarmac mm -hmm. because it's there to be used every single millimeter. And obviously, if you're just starting out, don't try that because no. you might end up dipping a wheel in the grass. Exactly, or... while, you're, while you're exploring it, obviously build up to that. Yes. That's a very important tip is if you're doing it for the first time or, or relatively new, yep. is build up. Don't go out there and try and set lap records straight away because that it'll never happen. Yep. Build up to, to levels, step it up like you're walking up a staircase yep. and just build up level by level by level and approach that limit. I think that you should take me out for a couple of laps in my car and show me how it's done. Before that happens, I just want to say once again, a massive shout out and thanks to GT85 um, <laughs> for allowing us to, to film this video, essentially for sponsoring this video. We'll finish this video with a lap around Snetterton, probably with me screaming in the passenger seat. Mega. Cheers. Look forward to it. <laughs> I'll talk around the lap. So yes. fourth gear for this one, smooth in, first apex, mid corner, second apex, bleed a bit of throttle on. We're heading right out to the track edge. In behind a beamer here, but we're gonna go down to third, down to second. Late apex, bleed off the brake, nose into the apex. Squeeze a bit of throttle on on the exit, wide around the exit. Right across the nose of him. Little braking, smooth off, wide approach. We're aiming for the last part of the apex here. Squeeze a bit of throttle, use all the track toward the exit. Fourth gear, heading up towards Agostini. Heavy braking at about 130, third, second, again, blend off the brake, in toward the apex, squeezing a bit of power on the exit, usually to the track edge, but we'll go past the Celica. Heading up towards 
this quick little left hander in close to the tyre stack, open it out on the exit. That goes. <laughs> Squeezing that braking again. I'm in second for this one. Nice and smooth in. Is all that little bit of AstroTurf gradually blending the throttle and the steering wider out to the left. Dab on the brake in third, in toward the third bollard. Again, feed the power on nice and gently. Right out to the track edge there. Down the straight, fourth gear. Fifth gear, heading toward the Snedderton Bridge now. We're gonna be braking at roughly 200. Fourth, third, smooth off the brake, carry a bit of momentum in toward the curbing. Second gear, curb in, squeeze, open it out to the left. Third gear, bomb hole. Braking a little bit, apex late, power on again, come right out to the track edge. Corum, in toward the apex a little bit early, carry the speed out toward the middle. In toward the braking zone here, back across to the right. The second gear, nose are in, squeeze the power on, bit of curb, bit of throttle, and back onto the straight for a, another lap of Snedderton. Just like that? Just like that. <laughs> oh mate, that was just, Absolute magic.